So you both have numerous credits that span uh, many years. In those years of the career, were there times where you said, you know what, I think I'm done with this. I don't want to do another project. Or was it one project into the next? Did oh, you, God, no. Did, okay. Did you take a breather? Did you regroup and say, hmm, is this really the life for oh, me? Oh, yeah. No, I, um, there were one, there was one particular time that, um, that I was just, in fact, I was going to quit writing. I did for a year. And I thought, I'm going to do something totally different. I applied to law school. And I just, I was going to live in D.C. of all places. And I mean, I like, I liken it to a nervous breakdown. My nervous breakdown was applying to law school. It's like the worst thing in the world I ever could have done. And I, I did it. I mean, I, I did it. I got in. I was going to go. And then, like, a miracle happened. And, I mean, not that anybody knew that they were saving me, but then Jerry Bruckheimer saved me by hiring me for Coyote Ugly. And I was just so, um, I'd worked in bars my whole life. So it made sense. And then I got the bug again. And that's when I, and then that's my big, big time of wanting to quit. And then there's like a moment in every day where I go, this is insane. But then I get over that. Well, for me, it's a daily process. You know, every morning I get up and I, say, I just, this, I can't do this anymore. It's not gonna, and then I get up and I, and suddenly I'm like, I want to make uh, this film. I want to make another film. I, I you know, t till I die, I want to make films. And I just love cinema and I've always loved making films. And so it's a constant process, you know, and you have to just, you know, shake it off and just make it happen, you know, but there have been so many ups and downs, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, but, uh, you know, and uh, I think that's life. And I think, you know, actually, what I learned actually was um, when we met Mother Teresa in Calcutta, she said, you know, it's not important how much you do, it's how much love you put into the doing, you know, and I think that's sort of the, the, the feeling that I try to basically live by, you know, that even if I don't get the chance to make all these movies that I've always wanted to make, even if I can just make another one and give it everything I have, you know, that's what it hopefully will count in the end. What would you say to someone that has had one very successful project work and they feel a little bit jaded by the business? They don't realize how much of a business it is and how little sometimes some things have to do about art. And you, they want to. You mean they're kind of spoiled? No, I think maybe they've been disillusioned by what filmmaking or acting or producing may be. They're, not, they're surprised at how much of it has, how little control they probably have over their vision once bigger names are attached. And they want to regroup. And they're on the fence. This is something they never thought they'd get to a certain level. Here they've gotten to that level. And now they're questioning, do I really want to do this? It took so much effort to get to this point, which so many people look at from afar and say, wow, that's amazing. I want to be in your shoes. But they're not sure, do they want to continue? So well, what's your advice to that person? Oh, that's a good question. The, I met somebody the very first month that I came to LA. And, um, and I didn't know that I wanted to do film, so I was a playwright and I came with a play and I met a young producer who now is a big, big deal, Mark Gordon, brilliant guy. And he said to me, I was like, oh my God, do I want to do film, blah, blah, blah. And he said, you know, this business, he goes, you have to ask yourself, can you handle something terrible happening to you once a year and then something horrible happening every day? And otherwise you can't live with it because it's, it's a very tough business and you have to... It's like I've, when, I, when people say to me, oh, I want to write a book or I want to write, you know, I'm like, it shouldn't be about you want to, you need to. And if you don't need to, like what Raphael just said, he needs to. So it sounds like it boils down to you've got to need to do it because yeah. you were almost about to go to law school. You were probably getting paperwork ready and then you get this call or whatever it was. My agent then, Martin Spencer, you know, I was in Paris kind of um, hanging with a girlfriend you know, my last hurrah before I'd buckle down and make something of myself, you know, and uh, go be, I thought I'd be like a child advocate or something. You know, I wasn't going to go be a corporate lawyer, but still, it doesn't, 
anybody that knows me knows I'm not academic. I didn't do well in school. It's a miracle I got in. It made no sense. It was running away from myself in a way. And then when my, you know, my agent faxed me this article because um, the writer was a bartender at Coyote Ugly and she'd written this great article in Esquire that Jerry had um, optioned. And I was like, oh my God, this is my life. Because it was not that I'm a singer, which she was, but the idea of working at a bar and the life. And, and then, you know, I kind of like had to admit, okay, that's my authentic self to do that. And um, I'm going back in, you know, because, you know, everything else in life, there are grades. It's like, well, if you pass that test, you're going to get an A. And then you're going to get this reward. And then you're going to get that reward. In this business, you can get rewarded for failing. And you can get passed over for succeeding. And it's just very, like, I mean, many, many people I know never, ever get a movie made. But they, but they are politically suave. They write scripts that are fun to read, even if they're not filmic necessarily. And then there's other people that are terrific, right? You know, great writers. I know that don't have the social skills in a room, you know, because it is entertainment. And if you're going to pitch, you know, you don't want to bore the person that's going to write the check, you know, because it's hard to translate that some, you know, writers are by nature loners. And so it's not really fair to expect them to do, you know, a circus act in the room, but people are people and they don't want to be bored.